This is just an iconic place for Iowa City residents. And, you know, it's unfortunate that it's gotten to a point where we have blue tarps on the outside and, and it got to that part. But the good news is it's coming back. Built in 1889 and 1913, these two log houses have been a longtime staple in City Park. These cabins are both listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. There was a time when these cabins were opened up for public events and educational programming. And it just really shows us what life was like during the early settlement of Iowa City. These cabins were actually built by some of the foresters and axemen who first settled in Iowa in the 1820s and 1830s. They were the ones that built their log homes. They were the ones that provided the lumber for the build old capital and the other cabins in town. But after so many years in the elements, the 100-year-old cabins took a turn for the worse. If you leave things out in the woods, unattended, you know, with squirrels and critters and termites and powder post beetles and everything else and mold, you know, they go, can go downhill pretty quickly. The roofs began to leak and water damage appeared both outside and inside. About 10 years ago, the condition had deteriorated so badly that historical programming was no longer possible inside the cabins. This wasn't something that just came up this year. No. This has been in the works for a long this time. This has been a long time coming. A lot, of, a lot of people have been talking about it for a long time. We've been looking for funding sources. We're just really excited to finally get it going and finally make it happen. It was then that the city began working with Marlin to figure out what the cost would be to bring these cabins back to life. I kind of started doing at that level the photographic survey of their condition and studying how they were made, getting a few very, very preliminary bids on what it would take to make these things up and functioning again. High cost put the project on hold until funding could be sorted out. With the help of some grant money and a few private donations, restoration efforts are now underway. It's kind of like a treasure. You don't get a second chance at it. Meet Phil Grossman, the man tasked with bringing new life to these log homes. The roofs and most of the floors are beyond the point of saving, but most of the logs are salvageable. These are in remarkable good shape. You know, you're looking at bur oaks, which they stand the weather really well. And even though they look pretty rough on the outside, honestly, in the core of them, they're nice and solid. To treat and restore the wood properly, the cabins need to be disassembled and taken to a controlled environment. And so we bring a timber in, we're gonna clean it up, assess what really needs to be done with it, how do we treat it, how it integrates with the rest of the structure. Every piece has been carefully inventoried and marked, but not all the logs will make it. And then the lacking pieces, pieces are completely gone. We're gonna fabricate or source, and basically we put in a timber that's gonna be appropriate for that spot. It was amazing watching two men carefully take apart the cabins piece by piece. The process is slow, but it needs to be in order to preserve the character of the logs. Every log and every piece and every chip was cut to fit. To a historian, these cabins are documents, even more valuable than a photograph or written word. I can see every bit of how they got here, the evolution over hundreds of years and starting in Europe and the New England and these mental templates and construction methods and how they marched you know, from the East Coast across the Mississippi River. Just reading about it, you know, watching YouTube about it, it's not the same. So when you can actually experience it, feel it, smell it, that's all of our history. So we can all take part in it, experience it, and learn lessons from the past. And freezing that moment in time is why the city wants to get these cabins back into use. We're going to be able to use it as a historical resource to teach people about our background, to spark the conversations about what life was like when Iowa City was first settled. Phil says it's this kind of work that keeps him smiling through the long work days. <laughs> you know, take care of the resources that we have and the history that we have, it's, it's awesome. So it's definitely worth the ride. <laughs> <laughs>